Okay, so welcome into our main showroom. Uh, so this is at DK's headquarters, Little Green Street Farm. And in this main showroom here, we've got about 11 cars on display. We're gonna go to the other showrooms in a minute where we have a further four showrooms that in total have about 45 cars. So this, this area wasn't here the last time I visited. No, we've just finished this within the last year. So we've added on this sort of glass box, if you like. So yeah. it's really cool in the winter when the lights are on and uh, you come across. The, uh, the courtyard and you see the cars lit up. Stunning, so GTO? Yep, 599 GTO um, with uh, a factory fitted uh, Corsa Clienti XX Aero kit. Only 25 cars had that from the factory and we've been in touch with the original owner of this car um, who confirms that it was supplied from new with this kit in place. It actually has the standard parts with it, all wrapped up as new. Um, got a 993 GT2 Club Sport next to it there which is uh, kind of special. Yeah, very special, especially now they've just turned 25 years of age. They've, uh, they've, they've uh, yeah, grown in popularity to go to the USA. So nice thing to have. And we'll just go through to the main showroom. It's like an Aladdin's cave. Yeah, so we like to have variety, as I said. Yeah. So in here, we'll always have a mixture of cars, you know, between uh, race cars, Ferraris, non-Ferraris. So we've got a nice old Pininfarina Coupe that we've sold to Holland, just there, 458 GTE that uh, did the Asian Le Mans series in 2013, won its class in every single race, then went to Le Mans in 2014 as a is result of that. Uh, we do own this, yeah, yeah. Which is, but it's for sale. And uh, yeah, really cool thing, because it did four races in its life, finished every one, so it never had an accident. And wow. went to Le Mans, then was retired afterwards. So uh, yeah, so and they're great, that's last of the naturally aspirated. Collector's piece? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's a, sort of the Want end of an era for that. Got a 993, another 993 GT2. This is, uh, again, paint to sample. A bit like um, you'll see the Carrera GT at the store, but this is uh, one of one in iris blue metallic, which looks sensational. And uh, we've actually brilliant. had a couple of people see it and say, I must order my new paint to sample portion, the same color. Alpha T33 V8 car, which ran at Le Mans in period and finished fourth overall. So a really, really cool historic racer. Quite right, it's quite an eclectic mix of yeah. cars. Yeah, a lot of racing um, cars in here, normally. This, this is uh, a little older. Yeah, so this is a pre-war uh, Fraser Nash BMW 328. So it's effectively a BMW 328, but badged a Fraser Nash because it's right-hand drive. Delivered new to the UK. Previous owner owned it up until last year for 70 years. I know so it's got an nothing about the pre-war cars. So where, where, where would this stand in terms of values? Uh, so this is, this is three quarters of a million pounds. Wow. Um, that's the, a lot. The good thing about the 328 BMW is that it drives like a post-war car. They were really ahead of their time. Really, really great cars. And uh, yeah, we've had a few of them over the years, so good things. Then a F40, as you know, we really specialize in those. So you'll see a lot of those today. This is one that we've got for sale, which amazingly has done 59,000 kilometers, but is a non-cat, non-adjust yeah. with our ceramic uh, brake upgrade. And then finally in the corner here is a, a McLaren Mercedes SLR. UK so this car. is a car that's tipped to be the next one to shoot through the roof. Would I mean, you they, agree with that? They do look like ridiculous value for money, yeah, don't they? Yeah, they, they, they really do. You know, this car's on the market at 239,995. Really? It's still um, on, yeah. It's done 20, 20, over 20,000 miles, but it's two owners from new, effectively three, but really it's two owners from new. Yeah. And this great dark grey metallic colour, which is from new, you know, most of them are silver, so it's quite nice to see one in a different colour. So this is, a, this is one I would be saying people should be buying. I, I would agree with you. Yeah. So we haven't advertised that yet because it's just about to go and have a service with Avant Garde, the specialist in SLR, we, you know, all our cars go through. 200, I think that's great value. Yeah, I agree, I agree. All right, well, we'll wander on to the workshops next. So here we are in the workshops now. Um, yeah. We're in what we call the race prep bay, but we've got these are more like works of art. Than yeah, ours. so Zondas uh, have become a bit of a speciality of ours in terms of we, we're actively servicing them now because they're not there isn't really a facility for, for Zondas to be looked after here in the UK, especially since Brexit. And there's quite a few cars over here. So we've got a C12 here that's the first ever right-hand drive Zonda built, chassis seven, um, which we look after and we're just doing some brake and wheel work on. Got a rolling chassis for a 250 California Spider. Incredible. And then this fantastic uh, Zonda F Coupe, which we recently purchased and then sold, um, which we've uh, done a big service on as part of the sale, and it's going to be delivered to the new owner very shortly. I love the colour. Yeah, it does look really handsome, doesn't it? Dark blue, nice. it's a theme today, isn't it? Then here's the rest of the workshop. So 
You'll see we've got 288 GTO having full restoration in the corner there, because you know they're, they're 40 years old now, so it's sort of worth doing. It's funny you don't think about it when, from my generation, that growing up on these things, yeah. it doesn't, time has just disappeared. Totally. Totally, totally. a few F50s around the place. Yeah, oh, F50s, yeah. F40s, 288s. So this F40, we've just done an engine rebuild on. Then there's another F50 here, which uh, is in for a major service. And another F50 here, which is also in for a major service. Remind me, what is it? Three, three million-ish for one of these now? Yeah, a UK, a UK registered um, F50 uh, today will be you know, three and a half million minimum. Minimum. Um, low mileage car, more than that. You know, I think in dollar terms, it's circa $5 million. And the big push has been, because they're now 25 years old, they're very easy to get into the States. Yeah. They only have 50 cars there originally, uh, but they're very popular there. So they've been buying up all the European cars. It's only two and a half percent tax position to get them into the States. So it's, pushed it's up. and now they're 25 years old, it's really easy for them to register them there. They just go straight in. So that has seen them, you know, grow in popularity. But the cars also, they're 25 years old now, so we're seeing them for sort of like sympathetic small restoration work, mm. where we completely strip the engine and gearbox away from the tub, refinish all the suspension, re refinish the plenum chambers, and just give them a you know a big sort of 7,500,000 pound service. So you've got a F40, F50, both iconic. Mm. Which one would you go for? I think, normally I'd probably, uh, you know, most days of the week I go for the F40 because it's a short and sharp, you know, enjoyable ride, it's like a thrill. Uh, but the F50 technologically was just so much more sophisticated, so clever. You know, the way it was, the engine's a stressed member yep. with the steel block so that, or the iron block so that they didn't, they didn't twist. Let's face it, from an investment point of view, you'd be happy to have had either yeah. and bought well, the all those F50 years ago. Certainly in the last yeah. three years, the F50's been the one. It was very yeah. static for a long time. Yeah, it was. Um, but you know, that US driver is the big thing. And actually that, that, that one we've just sold, the, uh, the one that's having a service over there. And we'll go through to the rest of the workshop. Okay. So more cars being worked on. Diablo GT that we've just done a huge service on uh, that one of our customers has sold and uh, we're putting a sports exhaust on it for the new owner. Yeah. Which the, again, Diablo is really hot at the moment, you know, just going through the roof value wise. Uh, top tip for the next couple of years. Is it? Yeah. Is it an easier car to drive than the Countach? Uh, yeah, they were more modern, more sophisticated, Pro yeah. especially the cars from the Audi era, so the, the sort of 99 onwards cars. So a late VT or a GT like that is is yeah. is, is the car, you know, six litre. Then this F50 is an example of one of one of the cars that we've we've been doing a big Looks brand birthday new. overhaul on. Yeah. yeah. So I think we've done about five of these to this level over the last year, wow. and people are you know just queuing up for us to do them because we've got all the finishes right and all the right hoses and the right stickers and everything so they're absolutely as when they left the factory, absolutely if not immense. better. You are the new factory. Well, in some way. <laughs> Another showroom Another. indeed. Another. Another so, incredible uh, one. Got a nice low mileage 430, one owner from new, 1,000 miles. A chairs and flares Dino GTS that we totally restored. Uh, right hand drive factory chairs and flares as well. So. 350? Very rare, much more. Much, much more. more? Much more. So yeah. where are Dino's now? I, mean, uh, I think if this was non-chairs and flares, this oh, car okay. this car would be, uh, of this quality, would be in the 400s. Um, but it's chairs and flares, so it's a lot more. 400? My head was in the 300s for Dino's. <laughs> I need to change. Three litre RS, which we have um, just sold. A great car, ran at Le Mans, like the yellow car, only once, so not four times like the yellow RSR but really fantastic road car. And to think this was, in 1974, was just a year after the 2.7 RS, but was double yeah. the price. It was that much better. And they do feel like a car from the 80s when you drive them in comparison to 2.7. What do you think about the equivalent type Porsches 2023? I think, that, to... I think Porsche do a great, great, a great job with the RS range, the RS series. Mm. It makes it really collectible. Yeah. And they did the same back then. You know, you could have the 2.7 and People the 3 litre and the RSR. Them. Exactly. And they've always been good value for money. Even a brand new Porsche G3 RS, I think is cheap, okay. comparatively. Now the nice XK140 again that we restored. F40 GT, so a car that raced in period, which is one of our, our long-term keepers for the, for the, for the uh, DK collection. I've been, I've been trying to clock up <laughs> through the day of 
just the value of the cars that you've mm. got. I can't Don't even do it. I can't even it's begin terrifying. to imagine. It's absolutely insane. But I think between storage, sales, yeah. workshops, I think there's probably there's probably 20, 20, 21 F40s. We've seen six F50s. Yeah. Five two eight eights. Uh, funnily enough, not that many Enzos at the moment, but um, oh, my favourite. We we'll have to get some more. And an Enzo twelve. Yeah. And those have. Those they've rocketed. gone crazy. They've gone crazy yeah, as yeah. well. I mean, I was funding those in 2003, 2004, 495,000 list price. But I think that was and the else. end of cars being good value from new because a Ferrari was a million yeah. pounds and they were like it's, half a million pounds. It's true, pounds. you think half a million pounds. And a Zonda then. at the time, you know, we looked yeah. at those other cars and it's frightening the, the multiples that they were. I, I completely more. got it wrong on the Zondas. Yeah. Then this is our prestige showroom. After you, Darren. Wow. So yeah. this is what we call the museum, which is one of our four other showrooms beyond the main one. Um, you know, we were talking earlier about yes. how the business has grown so much. So now, you know, the sales team, we've got six guys, which is headed up by myself as a lead acquisition consultant. We've got Harvey, who works alongside yep. me, who's been working with me since he left school, so for over 10 years now, and uh, has become a really accomplished salesman. Yeah, uh, he's well known in yeah. the industry. Yeah. Likes a bit of finance. Yeah, he does. He does. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, we've got the other guys that work in the sales yeah. department. So we, we make sure that we prepare all of our cars for sale with the research and marketing and all of that sort of stuff. So that when we go to market, that we're marketing the cars in the best possible fashion. And we've been quite ahead of our time with our use of reels, photography, the way in which we go about, you know, launching the cars but well yet another incredible showroom i don't think i've ever seen so many showrooms in different locations um so, so what's the rationale for having so many different showrooms i think that if you had a big warehouse full of cars yeah number one it's like totally characterless you know everything about us i always say that restorate uh, sorry i always say that little green street farms are biggest restoration ever you know in terms of we restore yeah. cars but you also restored that farm and all the buildings that you, you, you go in, yeah. all these showrooms, they are very much a reflection of how we do things. So yeah. everything is supposed to be to the highest standard. You know, all of our showrooms have tiled floors. We have the highest quality lighting, everything's humidity controlled, everything's heated, yeah. everything, you know, all the cars should be immaculate so that you should, yeah. in theory, be able to agree a deal on the Aston right now and drive it away. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd said to you a few moments ago, it wasn't on the camera, that uh, it's, you can see it. I mean, just every showroom I've been to, every building, whether it's the bricks, the floor, the surroundings, the shrubbery, the trees, the memorabilia, the detail. I've never seen anything like it to to that standard. And I think all yeah. of it, you know, as I said, it's a reflection yeah. of how we do business, yeah. how we sell, you know, the cars yeah. we sell, the way we prepare them. But also, a lot of these cars aren't ours. So I think when we're taking, if someone entrusts their multi-million pound car to us, we really want to make sure that we are looking after yeah. it in the way that they want. All I can say to anyone watching, the, the Cottinghams and DK Engineering have set the standard to being not here, here. It's, I can't even touch the ceiling. I've never seen anything like that. Well, we've had a head start, 46 years, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So yeah, so but some very cool cars in here, mostly for sale. So this end, all for sale. So we've got a competition Daytona recreation. So it's a converted road car, never raced in period, but was done in the 80s. Lister Nobly, brand new Morgan plus eight. Uh, three litre RSR Porsche that ran at Le Mans four times, which is super cool. We totally restored that a couple of years ago. And then these two cars, which we look after, so they're not ours, but this is a right-hand drive 250 short wheelbase, one of the first two cars to come to the UK. That was a car that was famously left to the RNLI um, yeah. for charity purposes. And we bought it, sold it to a client. He had it for a number of years. Then we bought it back mid restoration, totally restored it, and then sold it to the most recent owner. And then yeah. McLaren F1 chassis 31, which is a super low mileage car from new, less than 2000 kilometers in white, delivered new to, to Japan. Super, super cool. I love that car. Really, really, really like one of my favorites. And uh, always a bit of a showstopper when people walk in. Saving the, the best till last, so after I'm you. I'm so excited, I can see what's about to arrive in front of me. Okay, now we're into some really special stuff. So this is what we call our turkey shed, where all the old turkeys are. <laughs> old turkeys. <laughs> um, um, but no, we're very lucky. Probably the most expensive turkeys I've ever seen. We're very lucky to have such a great collection of cars that some of them are our cars in here. My, my eyes are literally popping out. Yeah, yeah it's an impressive space. Yeah. So some of them are our own cars, 
Some of them are client cars that we look after that we're entrusted to to do so. So, so this is competition. Yeah, competition is Daytona. Yes. So they only built 15 cars. This is number 15. Okay. And uh, it's a it did Spa 1,000 kilometers and Le Mans 1973. And it's super original. We have actually mechanically restored it, but it's very very original throughout. All matching numbers. A 250 LM that we totally restored in 2017. And uh, the, out of the 32 250 LMs built, only seven have their original chassis, engine, gearbox, and body. This is one of those seven. So it's a really great car and delivered new to the UK. Ron Fry uh, raced it, hill climbed it, rallied it, did everything with it. It was out every weekend. So it's also one of the most raced 250 LMs in existence. This is a right hand drive 250 short wheelbase. So we've seen between storage and here, I think we've seen four now of the right hand drive cars. They only built 11. Um, this was also Ron Fry's when it was new. So he had this before his 250 GTO, which was before the LM. I'm just scandalous at these cars, they're <laughs> incredible. I mean, this is And then just a stunning. pair of Absolutely short wheelbase covered headlight California Spiders. Unbelievable. Which is, for me, pretty much the most desirable Unbelievable. convertible Ferrari ever built. Both of these totally restored by us. A 250 short wheelbase CFAT cot rod to a competition car. A 275 GTB short nose here. And then, the ex Walt Disney 250 GT Tour de France, nicknamed the Love Bug because it featured in the film Herbie the Love Bug. So this was actually Walt Disney's car? This was Walt Disney's car. And this is the car that I mentioned in our yeah. other conversation that my father owned in the 90s and sold to fund okay. my school fees. But it now this lives it. with us. It's not ours now, but it, yeah. it, it is back with us and we've re-restored it and very lucky to have it in our, in our care. For your Mickey Mouse education. Yeah, well, yeah, quite. <laughs> yeah, like we did there. Many joking. Wow. James, I'm speechless. So I that's know, it. I, I don't know what to say. Thank you so much. No problem. It's been the most uh, incredible tour I think I've ever seen. So thanks very much. Thanks for having me on the channel. Anytime.